Hello, welcome. Um, let me go to full screen. Uh, hello and welcome to number three of my small series of uh, webinars that I'm doing for uh, Scan Pro Video. Um, and on behalf of Media City Training, the company that I uh, that run and train for, um, welcome along if you're joining us. Um, today, this episode is going to be on um, getting the sound right. Um, for those of you that have not joined us before, I always start with a little bit of an overview about who I am and what I've done. Uh, my name's Alex McLeod, I'm a Adobe Certified Instructor, but I'm also a freelancer, um, freelance camera operator and freelance uh, editor who trains. Um, and I work for a variety of people. Um, you can see um, this slide that you can see here is um, it gives you an idea of some of the people that I've worked with over the years, um, either in a capacity of... Um, being an editor, creating content for them, or um, helping them with some training, consultancy, workflow type stuff. Um, basically, I sometimes I'll go there as a consultant, and then I'll go, I'll ask them, is, is there any freelancers? Do you take freelancers on? And often if they do, I'll basically throw my hat in the ring and then hopefully get some freelance work as well. Um, and the this series is basically like little mini bite-sized chunks of things that I've learned over the years and things that have made my life easier uh, when it comes to working with Premiere. Um, and, and this one is is all about the um, trying to get the sound right. Um, I've identified if you've joined us for previous webinars. Um, there's um, I've identified there's seven stages to a production. There's um, the stage where you shoot, you require that's number one. Um, then you adjust and you organise. That was our first webinar. Uh, webinar number two was the third stage, which is making the rough cut. Um, three and four are sort of interconnected, making the rough cut and finessing the edit, getting it to duration, etc. They're, they're um, interconnected. And number five, the stage that we're going to talk about today is, is, is the audio. Um, so I'm going to talk you through, take you through a, a few different steps and a few things inside Premiere you can do to make sure the audio is as good as it can be. Um, and if you've received audio from somebody else, it's not so great. Um, background noise and that kind of thing. There's a lot of tools inside Premiere that can uh, really help you um, improve that audio and uh, make it sound good, even if it wasn't acquired in the best condition. Um, so if we move on, um, this slide you can see here, um, I really like this slide. It's sort of, uh, it sticks in my head whenever I think about editing sound um, and working with um, both pictures and sound. Um, in my opinion, and this is this is a common phrase, you probably heard it, but sound is two thirds of the picture. Um, so, if if you have if you go to the cinema, God, imagine that going to the cinema. Um, the idea right now in lockdown town of going to the cinema is just, um, frankly, it's it feels so far away, but also maybe possible in the near to distant future. Who knows? Anyway, you go to the cinema. Most amazing visuals you ever saw, incredible pictures, um, you know, stunning visuals, um, but you can't hear a thing that anyone's saying. Um, you are going to switch off. You you won't put up with it. You know, the audience will not put up with bad sound. Um, and it's it's like it's like a, it's the first thing you've got to get right. You get the sound right, then do your pictures, um, because otherwise nobody's going to pay attention. Um, and it, it, it's so important. Um, it, re it really, really, really is. Um, so... Um, Let's go to, to desktop, um, and I've got, um, this is my uh, training project that I've uh, created over the years. This has got a, a, a series of um, a series of different sequences set up to demonstrate different things. Um, this is going to be another webinar that mainly focuses on um, the, the screen, so maybe I'll, cu I'll, I'll cut to the camera um, at times when, when needed. I need to double check with my stream. Um, We've got, uh, I've just got a person watching for me, so I'm just going to double check and play something to see if we've got playback. So if I go um, sequences and I'm just going to expand this out a little bit um, and I'm going to just play. Whoa, okay, so that is too loud. Um...
the throw. Two, two, one. Ah, is that any better? Um, sorry, we've got a bit of a technical problem. Am I back? Two, two, one, three, three, five, six, seven, eight. Hello, two, two, three. Apologies for it, for the for the technical faults. Um, hopefully you can hear me again. Um, trying to work out getting desktop audio through the mixer. Okay, good. Um, so what you missed about that um is I'm gonna right click, um, and I've actually loaded this into the source window, and inside the source window it's possible to switch between composite video and audio, and when you do that it shows you the properties of the clip. Now, if I if I um, get this clip to the top and play it, um, so I'm hearing left and right information. And I'm hearing left in my left ear and right in my right ear, and I'm looking at this and I'm seeing that on the left channel, this is. So basically, we've got the person asking the questions on the left channel and the answers on the right. So knowing that now, we can actually, um, at the at the project level, um, eliminate the sound from that clip that we don't want. Uh, and when clips come in uh, in volume, it's a good idea to do that first rather than have to mess about with it on the timeline. Um, it basically depends how you want to work. Um, but one of the ways that I'll work is once I've identified the, um, the, the useful channel, um, at the project level, I will um, I will isolate it and I will double it over. So here I'm going to right click and I'm going to um, just going to zoom out a little bit um, and it's modify and it's audio channels. So basically we're going modify audio channels. Um, the shortcut for that, by the way, for those that like shortcuts and hopefully that's everybody, um, is shift and G. Um, and shift G works um, both um in the project window and also on the timeline. Um, now, when you um, when you do that Shift G or you modify audio channels, it tells you that the preset um, defaults to use the file. So, however that file um, was recorded when it's brought into Premiere, it it basically sticks to that convention. It says, okay, this file is stereo, blah blah blah. Premiere is you know it sticks to that convention. You can actually um, configure your own, and that's useful if you know that you're going to bring a large volume of a certain format in. Um, anyway. We're gonna we're gonna stick for this to be stereo, and we only want one clip. But because we've um, identified that on the left channel, the stuff that we've got there isn't what we want. Uh, we're gonna just gonna say, okay, please fill over to the right. Um, and then um, I'm on a 4K screen, but I'm on an HD resolution, so I've got there's a, some funny things going on. Um, I'm gonna hit OK. Now, if I double click that same clip and look at it, I can see that. Um, on both left and right, I've got the good sound. So if I play this, yeah, I think the... it's a different clip, but hopefully you take my point. Yeah, I mean, we certainly we never enter a race without a team tactic. So it's the, the only way to, uh, to maximise what we're doing. But we'll certainly be focused on ourselves. Um, and I'm just double checking. Um, it's not on the opposition. To... Just double checking that the, set, the playback is quite important on this. Forgive me, uh, we, we will get this right. <laughs> um... I'm just checking desktop playback is okay. Um, and yeah, now that with a stereo clip is important, but when it comes to clips that are recorded from other formats, sometimes you'll bring them in and they'll have more than one clip. They'll have eight clips or 16 clips. Um, a lot of the time when we worked for, when we, I did some stuff for the World Cup in Moscow, a lot of the clips that came in had 16 audio channels. And so what would happen is if you weren't conscious about... Um, the audio config when you brought stuff in. I'm going to use this. I'm going to use some FS7 stuff as a as a demonstration. Um, let's go uh, there, media, and here we're going to bring in some rushes native, and we're going to bring in some scout training stuff. Uh, XD root, and we'll have one, two, three, and we'll bring these in. So I'm going to double click this, and when you reveal um, when you reveal the audio properties for this clip, it came in an FS7. Um, basically, this actually has eight audio legs. Um, now, if I was to make a new sequence with this, um, and show you, um, you can see that. It, I mean, we've got we've now got eight audio channels that have been 
taken from that clip that the premier has basically gone okay it's got eight channels eight audio channels you want to match the material let's bring it down you then have six useless audio channels which um if you're going to do any kind of editing with this um it's it's problematic you don't really want it so i'm going to undo this i'm going to undo that and i'm going to repeat that same process so i'm going to control click these three and then i'm going to go shift g brings up that audio config matrix and this time i'm going to say to it um i only want one um and whenever you tell it how many clips you want it basically gives you a choice um of which which channel to to use for that one clip now um we're working on something bbc bite size at the moment and the, it's stu it's a studio record and the good channel is five so like the first thing we'll do is we'll bring it in we'll click we'll do the audio config and we'll click it to five um and we'll, and we'll do it that way um so so that's basically become a um uh yeah okay so that's basically become a working practice for us and we do it we do it at the very beginning of every edit um, now I've done this here, so if I um, click and drag this onto the new item, look, we've only got one. And so um, the the shift G, like from a from a perspective of um, getting your audio right at the very beginning, getting the foundations right, which I'm very keen on, um, is is a good way to work. Okay, so moving on um, on this timeline here, um, I've got a few things going on. If I play this, it's gonna it will be loud. And the reason it's loud is because we've got a lot of uh, stuff on this timeline um, that, that doesn't belong there. They've got a lot of audio playing back that certainly doesn't belong. Um, if you're ever in a position where you've got um, some sound that you're like, yeah, we definitely don't want that. Um, for instance, if I, if I, okay, so if you ever want to start isolating things, you can, you can hit solo. And if I play this, pretty soon it's very clear to me that like everything that's on here, um, is is pretty much useless for for most for the most part. So I can do one or two things. I can either um, I can mute this. Actually, there's a few things I can do. But if I mute this and play it, the sound that's going there is um, is you can't hear anything that's on um, audio one. So that's quite a useful function. Um, so on the timeline, you've got M and you've got S. Now M will mute. And basically anything that now arrives on audio one when the mute is checked and on um, will not have playback, will not be sent to the master channel. Whereas the opposite, if I hit S, the only thing I will hear played to the master channel will be with will be that. Um, so that's that's quite useful to know. Um, knowing now that this um, this audio stuff here is complete junk, I'm just going to make an uh, an alt drag selection. I'm just going to um, hit the backspace key and I'm just going to delete it. So then. We've got um, we've got a bit of music, and I'm uh, I know straight away that I want to I want to do a bit of a keyframe here. Now there's a good um, there's a useful hack we call it a hack, but there's a useful shortcut key um, that when it comes to making um, keyframes um, and also fading down the rubber band or the audio level or the clip line. Um, probably if you've been using Premiere for any length of time, you'll look at this white line and you go, "Yep." Yeah, if you push this up. You increase the volume of that clip, and if you lower it, you lower the volume of that clip. Um, we want this clip um, to to play at regular volume um, up until about here, and then we want to dip that audio. Now, um, if you don't know about this, then um, add it to your list of things that you will do from now on. Um, but basically, uh, as soon as I go over here, if I hold Control, you can see that the cursor changes from being a standard cursor to like a white plus like a white cursor with a plus icon. Now, if I click and click, that gives me keyframes, and I can dip this keyframe um, to an appropriate volume. Um, now, that is a good thing to know. Um, there, are, there are a number of different ways to make a keyframe. The, the, the Literally, the slowest way to make a keyframe is to place your playhead at the location where you want the keyframe and hit this button on the timeline. Um, using the, the control click uh, on, a, on a Mac, it's command click. Um, using that, saves a lot of time um, now another thing that can be quite useful to be aware of is that when you're adjusting the level of a clip so if i go here and um, click this down you'll see that the increments are, are, are quite arbitrary 
like it's not locked to any um, any mid decimal place. It's jumping from decimal places to to full values. Um, actually, when you um, click and drag something, if you hold the control key, and I believe this is the same on a Mac, if you hold the control key, um, you can lock it down to um, decimal places. So rather than it moving whole values and sort of inconsistently jumping to and from, it will it allows you to be a, give you a lot more control over the volume. So let's say I want this to be like um, minus 30, let's say. Um, so zoom out a little bit um, and zoom in. And then if I, if I, okay, so if you're hearing that back, I'm just gonna give myself a little bit more volume. If you're hearing that back, we've got an issue. Now, I want this music to be, um, I want this fade to be a little, a little better than it is. So I'm literally just clicking and dragging the keyframe. Um, and get it to where it is. And then the next thing you're gonna notice is that if I um, if I solo um, the clip that's that's just that I've made room for with that fade, I'm just gonna hit solo and play it. You're gonna see that whoever worked on this edit hasn't actually done that modify clip. So that again, on the left channel, we've got something that's that's we've got um, sound from the left channel of the camera, which is most likely the top mic. Um, on the right channel we've got sound for the boom so we need to sort that out um, now as I mentioned um, it's possible to modify the uh, properties of a clip within the project window but it's also possible to do that um, within when it's on the timeline so this time we're just going to hit hit shift and G and it brings up that same uh, dialog box for that uh, for that clip I'm just going to flip that over um, and this time I know that it's the right channel I want and I don't want the left channel so I'm just going to basically ask it to to play the right channel uh, across both left and right um, and then hit OK and then if I play this it should sound a little better open. let's have that music back open race this year because form that, that's faded a little bit, um, a little bit. Open race this I mean if I was spending time on this I would spend time on it um, and I would make that better one thing that immediately I'm identifying is that the um, this clip is under-recorded and I can visually identify that by looking at it and seeing that the levels are um, quite low. If this clip was was basically at the limit, this, this waveform that you can see going from um, bottom to top would fill the length of the, um, would fill the whole size of the clip. Uh, and if you look at the music, um, if you look at the music in comparison, um, the music is compressed beyond all reason. Uh, and it's absolutely at the ceiling. It's it's like there is no give with this music. You're talking. <laughs> look at the difference. So so this is very loud and this is very quiet. Now um, this clip was recorded um, by my sound my good sound recordist friend Pete Bailey, who is very very unlikely to be watching because he's extremely busy and he's working through lockdown. He works for ITV um, doing Good Morning Britain, which I imagine is a fun job right now. Uh, but at least he gets to leave the house. So well done, Pete. Um, he's recorded this with a low noise floor. Um, so I can boost this um, and not worry about introducing noise. Now, this is the problem when you boost, when you've got under-recorded clips that are recorded in noisy environments. As soon as you boost the, the core sound, the, the interview or the soundbite, whatever it is, all the noise comes with it. But let's, um, let's look at a couple of different ways to boost this clip. So number one, um, if we wanted to, we could um, basically just raise this volume like this. Um, oh, they've changed that. Like, there used to be a 6 dB cap, um, but there's now a 15 dB cap. That's me learning right now. <laughs> um, one thing I always say about Premiere is the more you learn about Premiere, uh, the more you realize you don't know. Um, and things change all the time. They never, never stop changing. There used to be a 6 dB cap on how far you could raise this, but now it's 15. Go Adobe. Well done, engineers. That's pretty cool. But the one thing you'll notice about this is as you um, as you raise this, nothing happens to the waveform, so it's not immediately obvious that you've actually uh, increased the volume of this clip. So a couple of different ways to to handle this. Um, I will very often when it when I'm working on clips like this, I'll just hit um, the key G, um, and G gives you four options. And um, the option that I always use is set gain two, which will basically boost it by. Um, by a predetermined value, whichever determine, whichever value it is that you you add. If I just tick that box and ask it to set gain to zero, basically this will push it as far to the zero point as it possibly can. Um, and remember, zero point is the loudest point. Um, any anything above zero point, and you, it clips. So um, 
you want minus values. Um, if I was to, to just basically use a very violent sound hammer and say uh, boost to, um, yeah, let's, let's boost this. To, that's actually, that's a just gain to zero. Actually, okay, that's wrong. We're going to basically set gain to, let's just increase it by like 12 dB. Um, then it's going to boost it up. And if I if I play these two together, it's an open race this year because four. It's an open race this year because former winners. I've now are got um, I've now got a, a visible increase in that clip, um, so it's not hitting zero point still. So if I look here, you can see that on my meters zero point is there. So anything above zero point is clipping. Um, so that's one way you can increase it. Um, and if you hit G, these give you a couple of different options. Um, and I'm, uh, I, I sort of don't really max peak and all peaks. Basically, will do a scan across the the clip, and it will, it will anything that's anything that's as high as the max, it will bring everything up, um, and normalize. Basically, looks at everything and just tries to push every single piece up. Um, the one I normally use is this one. Um, so if I just hit there. Um, now the cool thing about this is, um, the the two techniques that I've just shown you. If I go. Um, we've got two clips again here that are gonna that need that same treatment, but I, this time I'm going to do them both at the same time. So I make a, a group selection across the two. I go Shift G, um, and we know that it's the right channel. So that's that job done. And then if I make a, a group selection across these two and hit G again, um, I'm going to set the gain. That that gain works to 12, so I'm going to boost it by 12 dB. Never enter a race um, without a team tactic. So it's the, the only way to, solo uh, these. to maximize what we're doing. But that we'll certainly good be to um, we never enter. And so that's 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 one way to do it. Um, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna suggest that, that you experiment with audio gain. It, it works quite well. It's nice because it gives you a visual um, indicator that, that the volume has been increased um, using the gain tool. Um, but it's a bit of a, a blunt instrument, um, and depending on which option you pick within that window, um, will will the results will vary. Um, one thing to mention about the um, about the indicator that you've actually done the job is that the box will light up. Um, in this case, it lights up yellow, and that indicates that that something has changed, so the gain has been boosted. Um, so it's good to see, just from a sort of visual point of view, that something's happened. If I just back out of this, um, I'm just going to undo a couple of steps, um, so that we, we keep the we keep the clip um, modification, so that we've got the left on the right channel. We're going to keep that, but we're going to um, Take a look at the um, audio um, central sound panel. Okay, so the central sound panel is um, basically rapidly uh, the most useful thing regarding sound in Premiere. You, you can have the central sound panel is just fantastic. Um, I'm slowly. You'll see on my desk here. Um, if I just uh, go go full screen cam. Um, one thing with Premiere is there is there's a million and one windows. If I go up to window and just to zoom in a little bit. You can see that um, not only have you got all these different workspaces, this one's a fun one. If you were, if you uh, saw the last webinar, you'll have seen that I made a new special edition workspace for the COVID-19 uh, generation, which we all are now. Um, so I made a new workspace for it, and it looks exactly like the last one, except that it's in the COVID-19 world, and the other ones weren't. Um, but you'll see that if I, in fact, my point is that if we scroll down here, you'll see that all the different panels that it's possible to have open. Um, now, often the time is um, you'll you'll you want a panel open for its task, and then you want to close it because what you don't want is all the panels open all the time. Um, and on my desk, um, you can see that I've got this, which is a Loop Deck CT, um, which I've um, quite recently received, and I've I find it difficult to to incorporate things straight away into a workflow. Um, but one thing I have noticed is that it's quite cool. Um, I made my own panel my page on this, um, and so I've got a few things set up. Now, if I just hit, um, where is it, where is it, where is it? Basically, I've got buttons, and I'll just hit the button, and it, it launches the essential sound. So rather than having to go window and essential sound or change into the sound workspace, which for me, I prefer not to do that, it, it launches the essential sound just in one spring. That functionality I'm really liking, um, and I know there's much more I can do with this loop deck, um, but certainly for a page of having, like, for instance, if I want to open libraries, just hit that. Uh, if I want to open uh, Lumetri Color, just hit that. And it's really cool because it just, um, it's like you're able to spring open um, new panels as soon as you need them, just like, and it's, it's just cool. It's the first thing I've done. Anyway, the essential sound panel, um, 
works in such a way that it, it, it wants you. Um, let's go and um, you could see that. So um, let's go um, and look at the essential sound panel. And basically, it's um, it uses Adobe um, Sensei. So this is um, leveraging an, uh, an artificial intelligence algorithm. So it's like an it's like a smart tool. It basically it, it analyzes clips based on their existing properties. It doesn't just assume something's wrong with it. it. It will listen to the clip and it will it will try and work out the best solution. Um, the uh, essential sound panel for us, um, I mean, I'm working on this BBC Bite Size stuff at the moment, the teacher talks, um, the volume of, of work is just insane. Um, and there are a few tools that we're using uh, just to sort of speed things up. One of which um, you'll find under, um, under dialogue. Now, basically, the way the essential sound panel works is it asks you to, to, to identify to the software what kind of audio it is. Um, now, you'll see the grayed out. But if I go here, you can see that it says select clips with a tag. So you have four options. You've got dialogue. That's fairly obvious. That's spoken word. That's sound bites. Any sort of uh, if you if you're doing like a drama, what it's whatever. It's human voice basically. Uh, music, self-explanatory. Sound effects and ambience. Well, sound effects would be uh, explosions and bangs and knocks and bowling and that kind of thing. And ambience would be, I guess, anything that's recorded um, as an Atmos track. So if if it's not a sound effect, if it's um, if you've recorded like a wild track of something, um, that would be ambience. And so those are your four main categories. And the essential sound panel works um, by relying on you to identify the um, type of of sound that it is so i'm going to go here make a selection on these three we've now got um these 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 boxes here are active so i can basically um i can tell it now what what type of sound it is if i say dialogue all of the options um appear and i get to do a number of things with this um loudness being the one that i'm going to focus on right now if i hit loudness um and go auto match Basically, you can see that it's boosted. It's boosted these um, these clips. If I can play them. this year because former winners aren't riding. So with them, um, with the and it's the 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 cool thing about it is that it's. Um, hang on, we just need to do one thing with these. Shift G, go right. Tell it to do that. Um, the nice thing about it is is it boosts all the clips to a uniform uh, manner. So if if one's got a little less volume than the other, it. It sort of scans across them and goes, okay, well, you're a bit quieter than this one. Let's make us all um, to the same to the same level. Now you'll see here, um, auto match to targets loudness of minus twenty three luffs. Um, a luff is a, a unit of loudness, um, and certainly UK European TV and stuff is measured in luffs now. Um, and in, in Premiere, you've got um, a loudness radar, which you, if you if you deliver into broadcast and stuff, it's got to be loudness radar radar compliant. Um, and the way we do it is we we run a um, we run a loudness. Um, I'll, I'll go through it. Why not? Um, I'll show show you basically how it works. Um, to get the loudness radar, um, I'm just going to use my uh, loop deck, and I'm going to ask it to give me my where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um, it will speed me up when I learn where these things are. Audio, so I oh there you go, audio track mixer. Um, so I've got my audio track mixer here. If I wanted to do, run a quick loudness radar on this, um, I would basically, um, if anybody's if you've used Premiere for a while, um, I have done some training courses where I've basically gone, okay, so we're going to do this, and then everyone's gone, whoa, I didn't know that was there. Um, inside the audio track mixer, um, you've got a, a switch, and it, uh, being being fair, it's not. It's not the world's most obvious switch, is it? <laughs> um, it's like, what is it, seven pixels or something? Um, anyway, it, it hides and shows effects sends. So if I click this, um, when you do this, it opens up um, a whole new world inside the audio mixer, and it allows you to add certain things and submixes. And like the audio side of Premiere is super deep. We won't go into it too much. But I just want to show you uh, basically how to add a, a loudness radar here. So I'm going to open up my control there, an untied special. Um, I'm going to ask it to do a loudness radar. Um, now the default setting for loudness radar, if you if you're mixing um, for, if you're setting things up for um, for UK broadcast or European broadcast, you're going to want to change this preset um, from uh, LKFS to EBU uh, European Broadcast Union R128 LUFS. You're going to want to set that up there, and then. The loudness radar works by if I just run my playhead to the beginning and reset it. If I play this, 
open race this year because former yeah. winners aren't riding. So, so it, it works on it works on average. The Olympics last year and everything, the more turning pro. Um, now, the most this straight away is going to fail. Um, you need a loudness range. I think it's six. So anything above six and it fails on the uh, the range straight away. It's the music that screwed us over there. So um, I'm just gonna let's let's just let's um, let's reduce the volume. So I'm going to use the gain setting. I'm going to reduce the volume by like 12 dB. And then let's reset this and see if we can get it somewhere close. It's an open race this year because former winners aren't riding. So with the, with the advent of the Olympics last year. So this is too quiet. I'm not going to spend too much time on the loudness radar, but I just want I just want to make you aware of it. If, if you're not aware of it, it's, it's a really nice tool um, to make sure that you got consistent audio. Um, the goal is for a sequence to have um, to either be on minus 23 bang on or in terms of compliance, you're allowed to have minus five or plus five in either direction. So it could be 22.5 uh, minus 22.5 or it could be 23.5. But any any more or less than that, and it, it will fail to um, it will fail tech review. Um, and it's cool because it loudness is measured as an average. So rather than having peak volume, which would be if there's one really loud thing. Um, in a sequence, it would automatically fail. Um, the loudness radar reads um, the loudness over a period of time. So if that one loud thing was there, um, it wouldn't necessarily fail because as long as the rest of it is okay, it would go, okay, well, there was a loud thing, but the rest of it's okay. And that's sort of the thinking behind it. Um, and yeah, if you want to get it, it's basically from your loudness radar here. Um, so in terms of getting consistent dialogue and stuff, like you'll see how easy that is. I'm, I've just... I basically matched everything, and everything's matched to minus twenty-three, which is which is perfect. Um, there's a few things um, beyond that that the central sound panel does. Um, so if I open up a new sequence to to show you, um, in fact, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna play you some of these. Um, okay, so this might be. Yeah, this this was actually this is if you've been to the scan landing page, this was some of the recording. Um, some of the recordings we did, um, if I full screen this, this, that's my training room there. Um, and that's one of the guys from Scan, um, guy who builds PCs like a brain the size of a planet. Um, I think he's like senior engineer. Um, all those machines you can see in the background, um, I miss them. <laughs> I haven't been to my office in, in weeks. Uh, I love my office. Um, it's Media City UK. It's like, I love being at Media City. Place is a gold, ghost town right now. Um, but yeah, if you ever come and do a training course with those, those are the those are the workstations you get. Um, I've got a little bit of a slide deck to show you. Um, that isn't really one I wanted to show you. Just let me. I'm getting sidetracked. Um, let me double click, and um, I'm gonna go here. Okay, so this is um, occasionally in my life I get asked to do certain jobs um, where you sort of like you get the feeling that nobody else is doing these jobs. Um, and I did a, a pilot episode for uh, for a TV channel, and it was it basically involved me getting on board a um, HMS Daring, which is like a, a, a what class is it? It's a it's a floating warship thing. It's like it's just nuts, absolutely crazy. Um, and recording, managing the sound when you're recording interviews and stuff when you when you're on a um, a Type Forty Five destroyer is a little bit difficult. Um, and so. I, I use this clip quite often when I'm demonstrating some of the noise removal tools that you've got inside of, of Premiere. If I play you this, you'll get an appreciation straight away about like how la how noisy it is. Um. Okay. Ready? So I don't know how well that's coming across, but I mean straight away you can hear um, there is there is issues with this. It's very rumbly, um, and there's one extra thing um, that you can hear if I play this. Okay. In a classroom, typical classroom environment, I will be saying to you, um, there will be a bit of a to and fro and a bit of a, uh, what's the word? Um, we would talk and we would say, what what can you hear in this beyond the rumbling? Um, obviously, there's there's no there's absolutely zero feedback because I'm talking to a camera. I don't even know if anyone's watching. They're probably not. And if they are, hello. <laughs> but, you know, I don't, I've got no idea. So I want you to, to have a listen to this playback and look at the location of... Um, Look at this. This is the radar on board the ship. Um, this was for me. This was 
like I had my headphones on and I'm recording it and I was listening at the time and I keep hearing this squeak and I'm like, what is that? I take my headphones off, there's no squeak. Headphones on, there is squeak. So I can tell that it's being recorded by the camera, but I can't see where it's coming from. So if I play this, listen and look at the radar. Okay, Have you ready? I'd like to very warmly, warmly welcome you on HMS Daring. Oh, warmly welcome you. <laughs> <laughs> on behalf of the commanding officer and the whole ship's crew, uh, you're very uh, welcome to be on board, uh, and we have a very busy day ahead of you. Uh, we'll, I bet you are. <laughs> we certainly do. Uh, to make sure you're safe on board, we. So, basically, whenever that radar points towards the camera, um, it fires like a squeak. Miles away from uh, land and away from away from uh, land and away from the fire. It's crazy. All right, so so let's fix the sound we can fix um, because certainly the, the the tools are good inside Premiere, but you can't you can't really fix um, things like that so much. So um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to identify this clip as being dialogue. So I've made a selection on it, and I'm going to click dialogue. Um, I'm not uh, you know why don't I auto match it okay so I've auto matched it set so I know that it's it's going to be good for edit passing any sort of loudness radar test um now the essential sound is is broken into different categories the category that we're interested in right now is is repair um and then it gives you quite simple um tick boxes um now it asks you a question what do you want to do do you want to get rid of do you want to get rid of noise do you want to get rid of rumble do you want to get rid of both um Let's try the noise box first. So I'm going to check the noise box and I'm going to play it. And I mean, I'm, I've got my headphones on. I can hear that. That's <laughs> on behalf of the commanding officer and the whole ship's crew. Uh, you're very uh, it's, uh, welcome to be on board. I mean, it's pretty uh, good to me. Busy day ahead of you. Uh, we'll, you we um, uh, apologize uh, if I keep sure turning things up louder in, in, in your mix uh, in, in, on YouTube. Be a firefighter. Um, but if I if I toggle this off, on, off, on, hopefully you can appreciate like the the um, how clever that is. Um, and it's, it's it's using the uh, the AI. It's using Adobe Sensei, so it listens to the issue, and then it tries its best to combat the issue. Um, I I found that this fixes ninety five percent of issues, um, and you make a sacrifice when you do this um, because if the sound was bad you can't automatically fix it without sacrifice um you are always going to have to basically make a choice between does it sound noisy or does it start to sound low bit rate um when you stick some music over the top of this um it, it, it will be difficult to to identify that anything has actually changed with it but if if you know i don't want to put you under the impression that it's really bad sound it's going to fix it. it it won't if it's really bad sound it's really bad sound um this was you know, this was sound that was sort of in the middle category. It was, it was, it was okay. It was recorded with a boom, but literally we were outdoors, and there was a, it was an engine the size of a small country, um, so it was difficult to, to get good sound. Um, we also had a Ryko on, and it was, you know, all I did my best, but you can't work miracles. So that has fixed that sound. Um, if I say to it, um, let's give a go and reduce the rumble because that's another issue. That's a uh, there's a very low frequency rumble, which is you know the sound of a floating dev ship. Uh, we have um, a very busy day ahead of you. So uh, we'll take these two boxes and it starts to sound uh, a lot better. It starts to sound a lot better. Um, now, honestly, um, I've been using Premiere since 1999. And when the essential sound panel came out, it, it, it was for me it was a, it was an utter game changer, um, because I'm not an audio engineer. I, I I know I don't know a lot about it. I know what sounds good and what doesn't sound good. Um, but in terms of like leveraging the tools and compression and all that sort of stuff, it's not really my thing. Um, I would like to know more about it, but there are only so many hours in the day. Um, and I heard this described as like a, a Swiss Army knife. So it's like okay, pick the right blade, do the cut sorted and it allows you to focus on getting the content done and finished and sounding as best as it can be um without sort of having to you know learn and be a be an audio engineer and learning about compression and it's just fantastic it's away from, uh, land. Um, there is quite a few other things you can do with it um obviously for me it was just the repair that i was interested in um, also, you've got sliders all the way this way. It's full, uh, like is like full beans completely and utterly, you know. And you're gonna you're gonna get bad quality if you do all this because it removes too much noise and it starts to sound like it was recorded underwater. 
Um, so you have to use these widely. Um, one thing I'll do is I'll go all the way beyond acceptable and then wheel it back till it becomes acceptable if I use that as an example. So let's... Um, well, you can definitely hear the squeak when you do that. But you start to hear the sound sort of... It starts to sound a little bit low bit rate and a little bit... Um, you, you're making sacrifices. So, so use that wisely, um, but I think you'll find that it will get you out of a number of jams. It's pretty good. Um, one thing that's been added quite recently is reduced reverb. Um, if you ever get content that's been recorded by a client on an iPhone or an Android, whatever, um, it's very difficult to to get good sound on a device like that. And often you're in a, you're in a big echoey room or a hall or whatever. To just tick a box and re remove reverb, I mean, it, oh, it works really, really well. Um, and it allows you to just get away with a lot of stuff that previously you might have struggled with. Um, so, like, if that's not on your uh, radar, if you're not already using the Essential Sound Panel, then it really is, is life-changing. It, it depends on which you edit. You know, life change is probably a bit <laughs> a bit strong. Um, but it's, it's certainly, like, it will make things in your life a lot easier. Um, but... The question is now, um, how do we um, how do we address that squeak? Because inside Premiere, um, you can't um, that squeak is a frequency thing. It's like oh, it's actually on the recording, and it, it's not a it's not like I can't see it on the waveform. There's no way I can look at this waveform here and go, oh, I know where that squeak is. It's just it's it doesn't work like that. So that's where you need to bring out the big guns, and the big guns is Adobe Audition. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to replace, I'm going to edit clip in Adobe Audition. Um, and it's going to tell me, it, it, it keeps throwing up these weird errors. I'm not going to worry about it. We're in Audition now. Um, we've essentially created a bridge from Premiere to Audition. So that clip inside of Premiere is now inside Audition. And anything that gets done inside of Premiere is done inside of Audition. It, sorry, is anything that's done in Audition is reflected immediately in Premiere. Um, we're looking at Audition. I don't have a lot of time to go through this. Um, if you've never looked at Audition, I encourage you to have a look. It, it's, uh, it, it can look a little bit intimidating, but it doesn't take very long for you to sort of get into it. It's quite, it's quite, a, it's quite a, a user-friendly tool. Um, so don't let, it, um, don't let it freak you out, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so let me, um, let me do a little thing. Now, what you can see here is what's known as... Th this is the waveform that you're used to seeing. Um, now, if I turn that off and turn it on again, it's being a bit slow. Um, this view here is how you would normally view a clip, but this is what's called a spectral frequency display. And the spectral frequency display shows you um, sound in the form of a heat graph. Um, so at the very bottom... Um, of this, you can see that I've got low frequency, medium frequency, all the way up to ultra high frequency, um, and you know anything up in the high frequency is is sort of like you're gonna if if you've got sound up here, it's it's barely audible. You can't hear it, but it's there. And certain animals can hear it, so dogs can hear like higher frequencies and stuff. That's what um, dog whistles are. Um, and also, the older you get, and the more knackered your ears get, um, the less susceptible the less um the less they can hear high frequencies um in my training what i'll do often is i'll isolate a high frequency and we'll play it and half the people in the room will be like oh we got we got it's bad and then the other half will be like i can't hear it <laughs> and it's quite funny seeing the disappointment on people's faces when they realize that their ears are completely knackered for instance my ears are completely knackered like high frequencies um i've been in bands for years playing very loud without ear protection and going to gigs and stuff and my ears are goose um anyway again getting sidetracked why is the spectral uh, frequency display useful it's useful because you can actually see sound i mean you can see the frequencies of sound and if you can see them then you can work on them if i if i play this here So every time you see, um, every time you see this, this stack here, that is the radar, which is crazy. Um, now, the way that radar works is it fires bursts of, of different frequencies of sound. And if there's nothing to interrupt the frequencies of sound, they basically shoot off into the sky and they go on bothersome Martians, whatever. Um, but if there's a plane going past and it hits, the frequencies will scatter 
um, and they'll hit that plane and they won't come back uh, to uh, they will come back they'll be interrupted and so the whichever radar is sending them goes ah so there must be something there because the the, the pattern was interrupted um, and so that's what we can see here we can see all the way across the frequencies that there is there is some um, there's some stuff going on now uh, that's all very well for uh, radar but it's sort of screwing up my audio so um, one thing that inside um, of audition you can actually do is you can actually draw sound out um, which yes I actually said that you can actually do that so up here you've got some different tools um, one of the tools that I use for this um, is the spot healing brush I wonder which one works best if I go spot healing brush and zoom out a little bit um, I've now got a, a, a big like a, a rubber type thing and I'm literally going to just draw across like that and let go and oh my lord um, if I play this now just to um, let's zoom out a little bit. It's being a bit buggy. This just a bit laggy. Um, uh, you're very uh, welcome to me on board. Uh, so a very busy day ahead let's do another one. Uh, we'll... Let's let's get one of the really high energy ones. Um, see that's gonna. I'm not entirely sure why this is being so sluggish. Um, uh, to get really one of the high energy ones. <laughs> so if I play this. So there's no way you're getting rid of that inside Premiere. It's just it's not a it's not a thing that Premiere can do. But in Audition, if I um, punch in a couple more steps, take this, click and drag, gone. Um, and this works. I'm I'm using Radar on a on a Type 45 Destroyer. The more common task is getting rid of uh, mobile ringtone. Um, it's not often that you find yourself in a position where you've got to get rid of the radar from a Type 45 Destroyer. Um, but certainly quite often a mobile phone ringtone or, you know, something or BP or whatever, like a message or whatever. It, that's a very common task. Um, so what I've done here uh, relates to that exactly. Um, it's also part of the Creative Cloud. Um, it's part of the CC suite. If you've got the the, the, the full package, um, then it's part of the suite that you've got access to. And it's, uh, it's like... The essential sound panel is good. Couple that with Audition, and you you've got like absolutely killer um, sound editing tech, uh, capabilities. Um, let's just see if the the brush works on this one. Yes, it does. Yeah, so let's play it. So let me just undo that and play it before. So this is what it sounded like before. And then let's just um, let's just go over it. Get it. Uh, get it gone. And it just. And it's not made any compromise. It, it maybe tiny bit of compromise um, for the spoken word, but very little compromise. So those those two um, frequencies at certain times will will cross over each other. And so if you just pull a chunk out of something, you're going to make a compromise. It, you maybe lose the quality of the of the spoken word. But this is this is cleverer than that, and it it, it sort of realizes what you're trying to get rid of, and it just does it. Um, I think it's otherwise known as witchcraft. I can't really think of a better word to describe it. In fact, I just zap that one as well. Um, and that, and there you go. That that's that's basically it. So if I um, if I step back, um, hit Control S now. Control S for save. Go back to Premiere. Um, and if I play this, I didn't get rid of them all. So it's gonna just get my. Certainly do. Uh, to make sure you're safe on board, we're going to first of all train you how to be a firefighter. Or all the ship's company know how to fight fires on board. Because it's a very so there was a squeak there, the but I don't think I zapped that one. From, uh, land and away from Just bear with me. So we all have to be firefighters. So we'll train you how to do that Just first. trying to get my feet up. And then, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, and then in the, uh, uh, the lunch, link. before you actually get fed, we're going to get you into the galley and actually make the food. So you'll prepare the food yeah, for the 220 now. ships company. Obviously, it's, a, it's like a small we, city. No, we'll have some assistance. <laughs> it's like a small city, <laughs> Agent Daring. And, uh, and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get you involved uh, in, that, uh, in some of the motions of that city. So, yeah. Um, there's one other cool thing that I think I've got a little bit of time to show you. Inside of Audition, you can actually retime... Um, uh, Oh, I'm just going to press a special button uh, to give some appreciation as to how cool that is. Um, and it's a button that I don't use very often, but I'm going to use it this time. So um, where is it now? Here you go. So you can hopefully hear that. 
I can't hear the sound from the mixer, but that should have been an applause. Um, well done, Adobe. That's very, very cool. Um, so, final very, very quick thing is very often you, you'll you get some music that you need to retime. Um, so, I'm just going to um, just gonna have a little dig through um, dig through my audio. Let's see. So, I've got some music. Um, yeah. So, I'm going to make a quick sequence of this. Um, let's just... Pull that down a little bit. Okay, I'm going to draw your attention to the length of this. Um, this is at 2.15, okay? Now, what if we need this music to be four minutes long? Okay, yes, it's possible to loop it, and that's generally how I do things anyway, but it depends how quick, um, how much of a rush you're in, and if you need to do something really quickly, um, Adobe Audition can allow you to do this. So I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to edit clip in Adobe Audition. It's going to tell me some things aren't working. But um, hopefully all being well. Where we are, we've got some music. Um, now, I'm going to um, remind myself how you need to do this. Basically, we need to go multi. If you've got a new multi-track session, I'm going to go retime. And then I need to take that music um, that I had. That's that. So basically, I've got this music now on a month. This, this, I, I'm positive this will get easier. Um, that the extra step of making a, um, multi, a, a multi-channel, um, session, I, I, I guarantee will will get replaced soon. Anyway, I've now got this on a uh, multi-channel session. Remember, it was two fifteen. If I tell, um, if I tell audition that this is music, um, I'm going to tick the duration box. The target is two twenty. We don't want to. We don't want to. Um, stretch it we want to remix it now I said four minutes um, when you say remix it basically um, it does a bit of thinking and now I can punch in um, we've got uh, so if I say four and I'm going to go double zero my music now um, has gone from being two minutes fifteen to four minutes and you can see you can see where it's actually done it's done it's thinking it's done it's stitching but basically it's looked at that music it's learned the patterns and it's learned where the middle eights and the and the chorus is um, and it's learned the the feel and the groove and it's literally just added a minute and a half um, if I just go here yeah so this is a piece of stock music that I got from Invato Elements. Um, now, final final bit is you need to uh, we need to export this. So I'm going to go a file export, multi track mix down, and then selected clips. Um, and then it says, "What do you want to do?" I'll call it Retime. Let's go browse. Um, just drop it on the desktop for now. Um, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't drop things on the desktop. <laughs> but we'll just do it for now. Um, and then if I go control D, I've now got, um, okay, that's a PKF file. That's not what I want. There, there's, there, there's what I want. Um, now I've got, I've got that file and it's four minutes. Now if I, if I bring this into Premiere for you, um, let's go to my desktop. Um, um, there you go, there's Remix. So I've now got that, that music that was 2 minutes 15 is now 4 minutes 5. Um, and if there's a quicker, I mean, looping and stuff is fine, but it takes quite a bit of, to, bit of practice to get good at it. Um, Audition will literally retime your music for you. Um, that's all for today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I don't know who, I don't know how many people watching. Um, so thanks very much for, for listening. Um, got a little quick slide deck for you just to give you a bit of an overview about the rest of it so I mentioned that when we get back to normal um, when we get out of lockdown um, we've got a training training room and it's at the heart of Media City in the UK and uh, we use really nice kit we've got Intel i7 uh, Nux um, these are really nice machines um, got from we got them from scan pro video they are perfect for the job they they can edit all day long. Um, if you're clever about what you do with your codecs and stuff, these are, I highly recommend these machines. They are fantastic. Um, the machine, um, the machine that I'm using right now um, is is this one. 
this is one of Scan's um, Scan 3XS rigs, um, and I'm I've been editing this BBC bite size stuff on this. I'm on my third week. Um, it has not missed a beat. It is wonderful, um, and in terms of like um, cost effectiveness and stuff, this is this was this was expensive, but not crazy expensive and it's just you can see the spec it's uh, it's perfect for, for, for the job that i'm doing with um the keyboard that you can see on the on the desk um sorry the the monitors that i use we use benq pro video t uh t, tb 270s um the monitor that you can see um this monitor here um that, that you can see this is the that's the 270s i think i can't remember the model of this one but it's if, if ask ask me in the in the comments um it, it's it's wonderful um the the keyboard that you can see if i go back to cam this is a logic keys um shortcut keyboard um even i've been using for this for 20 editing for 20 plus years i love the shortcut keyboard it looks great keys travel well it lights up in the background using the loop deck tct which i love um, and the streaming kit, the, this this is coming to you via a Sony FS7, which is the main camera, fed into Roland VR1 HD. The microphone that I'm talking to um, is a Rode NTG1, and I'm feeding it into uh, a Dell, and we're using OBS to stream. Um, and yeah, that's 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 all for today. So I'm just going to have a very quick look at the questions. Please tell me about some tools. How can I match simple clips? Different quality of sounds. That's a difficult question. <laughs> um, the essential sound panel is your is your uh, first port of call. Um, so yeah, um, I think I'll try and come back to these questions uh, as and when I can. But right now, I need to carry on working. Um, there are BBC bite sized videos that need to be edited um, because there is a nation of children who need education, um, and so I shall continue helping them with that. Um, so thanks very much for listening and I will see you on the next one.